Kram, it's been one year since the Bab Road fire ripped through the towns of Malden and Pine City. This morning, our Tim Pham is live from Malden with more on the aftermath of the fire. He'll be joining us in just a bit. And our back to school coverage continues. Today, Coeur d'Alene students will return to the classroom. People are excited. However, students will not be wearing masks or socially, social distancing. How the district still plans to keep students safe. And of course, we're going to take you outside and talk your forecast for the day. Temperatures on the rise and uh, smoke returning to the region. Up with Crim begins now. Good morning and thank you for joining us on Up With Cram. I'm Channing Curtis. Well, today we're taking a look back at the fire that burned more than 80% of the buildings in the towns of Malden and Pine City. Tim Pham will be joining us live from Malden with the latest on how recovery efforts are going there. Meteorologist Jeremy Lagoo joins us now from the Weather Center as wildfire smoke from this season is moving into Spokane once again. And Nicole Hernandez is live from Coeur d'Alene as students head back to the classroom with different regulations than here in Spokane. First up, Jeremy, can you tell us more about the air quality people can expect as they head out the door this morning? Well, it's still staying pretty close to good. We're hovering right around 50 across much of the inland northwest, and you can see that there in Coeur d'Alene. Nice visibility all the way across the lake and a beautiful start to the day. Temperatures there where Nicole is as well in the mid 50s, 54. 46 up in Sandpoint, 56 in Spokane, 51 in Moses Lake and 56 in Wenatchee. Air quality in the low 50s for us, that's 52. And today we likely hover between moderate to unhealthy for sensitive groups as we get more smoke moving into the region. I was just checking air quality and across much of the state of Washington, it's pretty okay. If you get close to that Schneider Creek fire near Yakima, it is reduced, but down to our south, southern parts of Idaho and much of Oregon, air quality is bad and that is headed toward us as smoke starts to move in. You can see it kind of filtering in from the south. High pressure pushes it down. We wind up getting more of that in our region and not until tomorrow when we get wind to pick up does it start to blow away from us. For now, it's a little bit of cloud cover out to our west, but for the most part, it's clear skies overhead as temperatures continue to climb. We are going to be up near 90 later on this afternoon. Today is a hot one and it's going to remind you that summer is not over yet. Our back to school coverage continues this morning on Up With Crim. Coeur d'Alene and Post Falls students are starting school this morning. Nicole Hernandez is live in Coeur d'Alene at the high school waiting for students to arrive for the first day. Good morning, Nicole. Hey, good morning, Channing. So students are here at Coeur d'Alene High School officially. They have just two minutes to be in their seats for the first day of their first their first class on their first day. I, I don't know if you can see them behind me, but they're all kind of filing through the hallways. You can hear the teachers saying 101 over here, 105 over here. They're all directing all the new students to all their classrooms to get them in their seats just in time for their first class. So of course, very exciting for all the new students here today and everyone that is joining the first day of school festivities. I was able to speak with Scott Maben, who is a spokesperson for the Coeur d'Alene Public School District. He says that the entire community is really excited about this first day of school being a little bit more normal. People are excited. They, they are excited that school is starting on time this year and that we're all in, in our buildings full time. Um, I do hear that from our, uh, our teachers and our other staff and from a lot of families and students. At the same time, like, I, I don't want to overlook the trepidation that people have about um, what's going on with the pandemic and the spike in this Delta variant. Now, Maven says they are paying attention to what's happening in the local hospitals, especially with children. And as school gets going, there's a concern in the community about COVID-19 outbreaks in classrooms specifically. The district says that they are ready to go back to online learning if they absolutely need to. As of now, though, they are not requiring masks. The district also will not be providing official testing for students who have been exposed to COVID-19, but they will have take-home self-tests available at their schools. Plus, there will be resources for families as to where they can find other COVID-19 tests in the community. Maven says that when it comes to quarantine protocols, their nursing staff will help determine if and when a student needs to quarantine away from school. 
There's been a lot of debate in the community about how Coeur d'Alene Public School District is dealing with these COVID-19 protocols and guidelines here. Uh, like I mentioned, debate on both sides and Maven says they are listening to both sides and ultimately it's up to the board to vote to decide what happens next. In Coeur d'Alene, I'm Nicole Hernandez. Now other school districts in our area are also heading back to school. Mead High School students will be back in the classroom with masks today. The regulation remains in place despite the school district's letter to the governor and students attending Central Valley schools will start school tomorrow. Now, elementary school students in Moses Lake are also returning to their classrooms today and a new elementary school there is having its grand opening. Take a look at this. Here's a look at what the new place looks like. It's called Groth Elementary and has been under construction for 14 months now. There have been a few delays, but the building is done and it's ready for the kids to start this morning. Now, this is not the only new school for Moses Lake. They broke ground on a new high school just a few months ago. Groth Elementary is having its official ribbon cutting ceremony at 815 this morning, and then students will start showing up at 840. We were able to speak with the new principal, and she says the community has been really excited about this new building. I hope it's going to be their, their, their second home, their, their community where they are excited to be here. Um, just seeing their faces coming in last week for conferences, families were excited. Uh, they didn't care that there was still some construction stuff going on here and there. Um, they were just excited to be here and be a part of a new community. Now, all Moses Lake students and staff members will be following the state's mask mandates. They will also follow testing and quarantine protocols. Right now, our Tim Pham is live in Malden as today marks one year since the town and Pine City were nearly destroyed by a wildfire. Tim, I understand you have the latest there on recovery efforts. How is it going this morning? Hey, good morning, Channy. Yeah, it's going to take a long time to fully recover as this really this fire was devastating and destroyed homes and businesses. Where we're standing right now is the post office or what used to be the post office. Now the post office is in a nearby community until they can rebuild their public service building. But I want to point something out to you. Our photographer Nate noticed this sunflower uh, kind of growing in between some of the rubble here and I just thought this was such a beautiful illustration of what this community is going through right now. Some beauty from ashes right now and thinking about how this is that sign of hope, of the hope that is to come for this community as they begin that regrowth of their community here in Malden because yeah, it is just an absolutely devastating situation about what happened here one year ago today. So let's take a look back at what's happened in this last year because there's been so much from people who have stepped up to help, but then also the own people who lived here and called this home. They've spent so much time trying to make this feel like home once again. So this all was caused by the Bab Road fire. It destroyed 30, uh, it caused 39 Labor Day fires last year and 500,000 acres across Washington in just 36 hours. 200 residents were forced to evacuate. 67 homes were lost in Malden, 13 in Pine City. Now, July and August last year was actually a little bit cooler and not as active in terms of wildfires. Not something that we've been used to over the last couple of years. At least that's what the Commissioner of Public Lands, Hillary Franz, told me in an interview on this one year anniversary. She told me that uh, some fire officials and forecasters were uh, cautiously optimistic. And then Labor Day came and then there were those hurricane forced winds. We all remember that that caused problems in Spokane, in Coeur d'Alene and all over. But it didn't just knock down trees. It also sparked fires in particular in Malden. A tree was knocked down on a Navista line causing the fire that burned the town to the ground within two to three hours. Now, the town only has eight volunteer firefighters, or at the time they did, and five of them were battling other fires nearby. So there were only three here in town able to protect the town as best they could. France tells me that she will never forget what she saw while touring the destruction in Malden not long after the fire. That tragedy is one that will live with me and is frankly the it's what the warning we've been trying to tell the rest of the state for a very long time, that we have communities that are sitting with very, very high wildfire risks with limited resources in the air and limited resources on the ground. 
So we asked her, you know, when you say there are a lot of communities at a wildfire risk, just how many are we talking? And according to the Department of Natural Resources, right now there are more than 200 or 2 million homes in the state of Washington that are considered at a wildfire risk. So after touring Malden and seeing the destruction, Franz tells me that she told her team that they need to do better for the people of Malden and the entire state. Hillary Franz tells us that she worked to get a new fire truck for the town of Malden, as well as helped with FEMA response and getting them that funding and also supporting smaller fire departments through the much needed funding they need. Malden, we remember you. We are going to keep on remembering you. We're going to do everything to help you rebuild and stay safe in the years to come. And we're going to make sure that we're doing everything possible to prevent no more Maldens in the state of Washington. In April of this year, the state unanimously passed a bill to create a dedicated fund to prevent and fight wildfires in Washington. House Bill 1168 provides $125 million every two years to boost wildfire response, speed up forest restoration, and support community resilience. So taking a live look now, you are looking at the flag that now bears over the town of Malden, where that uh, fire department used to stand. The fire department, one of the buildings destroyed here in Malden. They hope to rebuild in that same spot one day, but it's all starting with this flag you see here that is brand new as of yesterday. So during yesterday's event, the mayor and fire chief stood by as the flag was retired and then replaced with this new one. The new fire chief in Malden wants to keep something like this from ever happening again. Can't uh, thank enough, you know, DNR and uh, Spokane Valley for giving us the, the equipment uh, to be able to do, you know, what we need to do. Hopefully we can keep this from ever, ever happening again. And that's the goal, but, you know, you, you don't ever know. You can just be ready for it. That's all you can do. So last year, Spokane Valley donated a fire truck to the town before they got a new one for the department. So uh, something that's important to mention is so many people stepping up to help the town of Malden and the people here. You know, they need us right now. You know, there's people who are in temporary homes right now, uh, but some homes were spared. But either way, it's going to take a long time to rebuild here and communities from across Washington and even state lines stepping up to donate to Malden. The neighboring community, Rosalia, stepping up in a big way to help out as well. Neighbors gather to help the town rebuild and support came in the form of clothes, food, shelter, and really anything you can think of that was donated to the Rosalia Baptist Church. And at one point, there were so many donations, they were actually put on pause. Good people are sacrificing and coming together, anything necessary, whatever needs to be done to help their neighbors, to help their friends, to help their family. So when something happens to them, it happens to us. We're, we're one community, uh, and, and it's, that's really, been a beautiful thing. One of Spokane's most well-known businesses also stepped in to help. The owners of No Lie helped to raise more than $100,000 for the towns. And the co-owner, John Bryan, said it was really just all a part of our mission. Cindy and I's uh, families both have been helped by government programs. I think that historically, No Lie was built on community and uh, there were times when we just tried to keep our business open in the early years too. And you feel that when you're in that place. And I think today when we have the ability to help, um, with the power I think of the Spokane community and NOLAI being a part of that with our community, we have the ability to raise it, again with dignity and respect, that it becomes a cause. People from Western Washington even joining in to help three men from King County showed up for the community and they made the five hour trip to hand deliver a $4,000 donation to recovery efforts here. Responsibility that we need to do something because we live in Washington and uh, we feel that our neighbors need our help. So they were a part of many agencies that came to help after the fire. So a lot going on here one year later and a lot of work still ahead. Just in a few weeks, we are told that a temporary fire department is expected to be uh, built 
here in Malden on the 15th of this month. And so that is happening very, very soon. But yeah, a lot of work ahead here on the road to recovery. In the meantime, you can always text the word FIRE to 509-448-2000. We'll send you the latest updates on the recovery efforts here in Malden. And then coming up a little bit later on Up With Crime on the CW22, we'll hear from the mayor of Malden and what he's doing to help make sure this community gets back to a new normal. For now, reporting live in Malden, in. I'm Tim Pham. Back to you. Now again, we will be commemorating the one year anniversary of the Bab Road fire all morning long with special coverage on Up With Crim that will continue all morning long again live from Malden.